welcome. Seems like we agree on the plan. What we is plan the plan? We plan to go to Chuk, uh, exchange Draw Hurum and his stuff, I suppose, for uh, the girl. Take her to the edge. The others will then take her to the edge of the Sylvan Sanctuary. Either exchange her for the, like, the, the cauldron. Then take that back to Chuk and exchange the cauldron for Draw Hurum. Hopefully, this will go perfectly and he will not be left there to be tortured for months before he's eaten. So, trust so, exercises. So, how does how does Rohirrim feel about this? I mean, like, if his attitude you know, is that Chuk is so incredibly powerful that she could take on the entire group. He doesn't, you know, if when he... Right now... This offer is, um, there's different mixes to it. Some of it he realizes, some of it doesn't. What he doesn't realize is that, in a way, this is a way to pay. You know, if, if the others betray him and everything fails, he will suffer and die. Uh, but it will be a, it will have been for a just cause, and it would, in a way, have been a little bit easy. A little bit of an... You know, he, he understands kind of the, the feel that Thomas, or he thinks at least what Thomas felt, which was that there's so much going on that maybe just if, if you could, could spend your life, expend your life for, for a good cause, then, then you could sort of rest easy afterwards. So a little bit of that, a tiny bit of that. More so, it is a feeling that this is not something he wants to do because he's still a little bit unsure, not really of Chug as much as of the Druids, if they will actually do this. Uh, he hasn't had the best relations with them in the past. But he does also feel that he wants to honor Fargus's promise. And this seems a way a, to be a way in which he can certainly put himself directly to that. And he can risk his own life rather than the life of his allies, allies that he has lost in the past. If this goes haywire, he's the only one who'll pay the price for his plan to deal with in this in this fashion. And, well, he certainly doesn't want that to happen, but... So, Dwohirim so, is uh, more concerned about the uh, the druids backstabbing, given his negative relationship with them, than he is about uh, uh, Chuk saying, yeah. nah, when, I'm gonna when keep the girl everything. Is, uh, when the girl is brought over to this... Uh, this guy, maybe he'll just grab her and then leave everyone behind a wall of trees and not give the culture up in the final place. I mean, I mean, she, he can grab her, but if she grab, if just grabs her and you know, just does that, you know, obviously in front of us, he's going to get lost. That's the hope. That's the hope, yes. Or he'll try to scam you or something. That's to Herm's fear, at least. Uh, Chuk is a dragon, and she's probably evil. Uh, that's probably safe to assume, uh, just as Ravinger was, safe to assume. But that does not mean that someone... Just because someone ha doesn't have a moral fiber doesn't mean they have to be completely unreasonable. And, uh, and that's certainly something he's learned. He had, he had a, uh, a, bit of a, a bit of a... You know, a, a superior once back in Horizon who probably he would say was also very evil of a person. He was a terrible person. Just absolutely horrible worth it, work ethic. Real jerk. Uh, he was certainly not reasonable. Uh, so... When you find few reasonable people, you will take that chance to, well, be reasonable yourself. After me stepping away, this is the best idea the group has. For what they want to do. And the group is alright with pursuing this angle. Well, I am at least. So, sort of, only me do we have cheap talking, usually. And uh, dark as well. I'm really not that comfortable. I haven't heard with anyone else art. volunteering, but I mean, it's not a case of volunteering. I just don't feel entirely comfortable of just leaving character surrounded by a green dragon. No, of course not. But I feel it's the best option, actually. I mean, the the adventurer thing would just be to go slay the evil chromatic dragons, no question asked. But I don't think we are we are that kind of group usually. Well, perhaps if this fails. That would be a sign that we should be. He was trying to turn over a little leaf. He would rather risk himself than his allies. 
He doesn't want to die. Um, maybe a tiny, tiny bit. What, what, you know. Uh, maybe after he kills Ajax, he can uh, find peace with death. You know, maybe, maybe. Uh, is there anything Duke would promise him <laughs> before he dies? Then maybe that would be it. <laughs> Just promise me one thing, Duke. <laughs> Just kill Ajax too. Just kill him and let him know that it was because of me. I am Ajax. What? <laughs> I knew. <laughs> I think we have that joke before. Actually, I remember that. Well, I think we had the joke with everyone. Uh, oh, okay. Yes, Aurelia rips off her face. I am Ajax. <laughs> everyone is Ajax and also a dragon. And also an intellectual. That's just how it works. Oh yes, yes, of course. Yes. Uh, I mean, yeah. All right. Guys. So do we do it? I just, I just wanted to confirm, like, uh, whenever Thomas decided that he wanted to venture off into uh, the Scarlet Circle territory. Yeah, that's what, I, that's what I'm feeling this moment is. Thomas came back and... I mean, that, that was... Thomas didn't come back, you rescued him! That's that's true also. <laughs> that was infiltration, though, and not, like, Ooh. business. And that's not, hold me hostage, you know. I'm going to Please, keep you hold me hostage. I'm, they're going Aww. to keep you as a ward for four years and teach you how to be a, a better person. Uh. I mean, the alternative was just mm, rushing the place, basically. No, that's that's never going to work. You know. I mean, going in for the back entrance and trying trust, to break her trust, up. But. Everyone has to trust him for this and... and he thinks this is gonna work. How and does Garak if, feel about that? <laughs> if if anyone's risking it, I mean, it doesn't feel good it's, about it, but it's, a, it's the option that's probably gonna work. So uh, trust me and my sense motive check on the green dragon. <laughs> well, I mean, if she would rather have the girl, she'd just say no to this whole arrangement. Yeah, exactly. She'll ask her first, and then we can you can. I suppose that then, then. You, uh... All right. Well, if you don't want to do anything else, you can spend the several hours it'll take to walk all the way across the city again. We aren't going to uh, use that scroll to do it. I mean, that would just be silly. So. Hmm? Yes. Yeah. All the way back. It'll definitely be uh, afternoon. Certainly, by the time you uh, make it. All the way back to Juke's estate. Lose some weight. Many hours of walking, and uh, certainly uh, there. Uh, it's not a straight shot either. It is uh, definitely mid-afternoon, maybe 3 p.m. Because in addition to the walking, you also have to keep uh, a close eye on patrols. Um, as noted, and this was while Manakai was away when you guys were heading towards the Goblin Market, uh, kobolds. And uh, bugbears and hobgoblins. Primary kobolds are out in force. It seems that there are organized units moving through the city, perhaps to deal with some threat. And those units include individuals who don't look like they belong. Uh, you imagine who have been impressed from uh, adventurers and uh, from people who've come in by boat. And they are on the move. And so, uh, since I imagine you guys want to avoid being noticed, mm -hmm. attracting attention, given your proclivities, it ends up taking a little bit longer, which is why it's all the way at 3 p.m. roughly by the time you make it back to Chook's estate. The guards, roughly the same as you saw um, the last time you were here. So they sort of blink at you, and they look at each other, and then they ask for your weapons. Sure. I mean, yeah, sure. <laughs> and then they kill <laughs> well, yep. yeah, well, damn. That's what I get for thinking that we were in narrative hand waving mode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Yes, that's what Fargus said. And that was the session he died. He said that? He, he can fight unarmed, it. yes. Oh, my. <laughs> I, I absolutely cannot, so. Uh, <laughs> maybe, I'll, maybe I'll live. Uh, you are escorted to the courtyard. Let me go ahead and grab our friends here. Do -do 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 -do. Do -do 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 and uh, it's maybe only a six-minute wait. Uh, as uh, out from the the mammoth primary manor of the entire estate, 
uh, walks Chook, as equipped as she was when you saw her last night. Uh, by her side, uh, not on top of her this time, is Nelron. The uh, green dragon with her amber eyes strides down the stairs onto the beautiful pavilion with the nice cobblestone and the fountain, the hedge maze, off in the distance, the greenery, which is still green, despite the fact that it is cold as fuck here. And Juke quirks her head, says, I take, then, that you have arrived to inform that you have... Spoken to the uh, druid in question, given him the offer. He seemed, understandably, uh, having our time to trust us, <laughs> or you for that matter. <clears throat> However, uh, well, I have the same kind of cleverties towards him, so that is as it will be. He, however, was not sure he could believe that we would actually bring him the girl, or that she would even still be alive or in a condition to, to move at all, or be moved for that matter. I take it this is, this is untrue. She can move, might be in a state where she can sort of be brought to him. Chuk looks, uh, swivels her head to look down at Nelron, and Nelron says, it would be difficult for her to walk. However, I do think she is stable and capable of being transported. Not too much loss of... She has all of her limbs still. I suppose that's something. <clears throat> Very well then. Uh, he has agreed then, if that's the case. If she is brought to... Uh, close to the, to the enclave, we will then exchange her to us uh, for the cauldron. We have been shown it and seen what it looks like so that we will not, well, so that he will not trick us. Trick us. However, this of course leaves the problem that you are unlikely un to just give her up to us for such a trade. To ensure that you might Trust that there will be no attempts to just sneak her away. He will go back on his bargain or some such. Uh, we discussed it, and it seemed possible that one of us might stay here in her stead until the cauldron is brought here. The dragon... Perhaps it does the dragon equivalent of lifting a brow. Right. So, let me see if I have this correct, dwarf. You have spoken with Feral the Ever-Living, and... He wishes to accept this trade of the cauldron for his beloved and apprentice. However, as he is naturally distrustful of me, you have decided to offer one of yourselves as hostage in the hopes that Everything can be moved all right. Yes. The dragon opens her mouth as she's about to, like, rumble something, and then closes it, and looks down at Nelrod. The... Half-Elf says, Well, you must understand that your group, while certainly capable and you are writing your names in the Dragon Empire, so it sounds like 
uh, Chook has a personal vendetta against this Theral, and having one of you wouldn't quite be the same, particularly not, and he points towards Tohirim, say you, for example, as you also dislike the Druids, which does lead me to be curious as to your motivations here, as I can't imagine why you would advocate leaving one of your group here to benefit the druids. I know you explained the situation to us last night, but it is... I would think that receiving information about the gloom would be of greater assistance to the Archmage than uh, this druid, Theral the Everliving, who is content to uh, cower in his grove. I am frown slightly. And uh, not it is, yes, it is true. The information would likely be more valuable to the Archmage. However, sometimes, so it looks between the two, is even those who often serve might be allowed to indulge a bit in some personal affairs. I also believe that this Ajax is someone that only I know enough of to be willing to deal with. The rest of my associates will by themselves go after the gloom just fine, but no one of them knows the danger that Ajax poses to everything. He's a terrible being will do anything to advance the High Druid, and I I am the only one who seems to be willing to really do that. My associates has agreed, have agreed, even though it is not in their entire interest, that they themselves have personal interest as well, that I might help with later. Chook snorts loudly, and perhaps offers the equivalent of a guffaw. Yes, Everyone has their personal interests, including druids. What makes you think that this Theral the Everliving will be of any service or assistance to you? After all, he will receive his beloved back, and he is offering quite the price in exchange for her. He would not feel beholden to you, dwarf. We would have had her over until we have gotten the cauldron. Yes, you get the cauldron. He gets the beloved. You deliver the cauldron to me, but he has his beloved, meaning he has no further need for you. A favor for a favor. Dreams is to think. Like, 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 chooks her, like, shrugs and, like, holds out her, like, her, her, like, her left claw, like, in a, you see what I'm getting at sort of situation? Like, ah? Eh? Sure. Not slightly. I suppose. I see what you're saying. However, this might be something to worry about once this is done with, you will get what you want, and it's another artifact that the druids might not possess anymore. So much the better, right? You get what you want. And Chuk, uh will lower her claw, let's say, you might understand my position. I initially invited you because we share a common enemy. And it seems as if you are putting some faith in hoping that this common enemy will cooperate with your desires. There. Well, the hope is to turn them against themselves, to be honest. This leniency of working with people such as myself is something I rarely find in uh, their druid kind. Fargus turned me on to some, and I see that there are some who are willing to do such a thing. In their work with me, and in aiding me, and having me aid them in different fashions, they anger 
people, such as Ajax, who would rather see that Hydra would have a strong position of pure predatory rage and anger, and killing those I hold dear. He sort of sees from her to, uh, to her husband. Certainly not all those I care about are capable of defending themselves against such people. However, in splitting the enemy, I can have allies. Perhaps he doesn't know yet what he will be dragged into by aiding me, but... Well, if my experiences prove me right, and I think they would, then this could create some uh, ruckus... Mostly for uh, Theral, but I'm hoping I can convince him after he sees the backlash that, well, he has a lot of other places to go. Seems like he's already spent a lot investing in this, and, well, this trade will only bring him so much further towards us and away from them. Chuk offers the equivalent of a grin. Which is, uh, considering the carnivorous nature of dragons, a rather menacing uh, gleam <laughs> of uh, sharp, spiky teeth. <laughs> Dripping with poison. I dream of a slight flash of what will happen if, if the others don't manage to do this trade. But, uh, you know, he, he hopes the sentiment is in, is in a positive way towards him. Shook <laughs> uh, uh, will look away from uh, Duo Hiram and uh, at her husband, and the uh, two sort of like lean in close to each other and uh, perhaps attempt to uh, whisper to one another. <laughs> then uh, the two will lean back and and uh, Chuk will uh, look towards Nelron and Nelron will look at Dohiram and say, Now... You seem to be the spokesman of your group, and it is understandable considering the the personal burdens you have taken upon yourself. However, considering your familiarity and your desires to keep Theral in check, perhaps it would be best if you went and another of your group stayed here. Someone like... Elreli knows this. His eyes go straight to her, although it seems like he's looking around the group for a little bit, like he's thinking. Uh, maybe the individual who does not want her name written in the annals of history, only her deeds. Uh, Aurelia, was it? Yes, that would be me. I'm next to her. You seem the best equipped duo hearum. Uh, for speaking with this Theral and ensuring that he upholds his end of the bargain, uh, whereas if you stay here, your group, which is so quiet, would have to fight in your stead. Considering how you are such a talker, with such a strong personality, perhaps it's best if you go and Aurelia stay. That, that is, if Aurelia sees the value in these words. I have not asked that much of them to trust me in such a way. It looks to Aurelia. I could not ask such a thing. I accept. He raises an eyebrow. And you are certain of this? No. <laughs> but that does not matter now, does it? He looks towards the two others suspiciously. Looks to Aurelia. There's clearly something he doesn't know going on here. But, uh. Looks back to Aurelia. Slightly confused. And looks back to the others. If. If she indeed were to stay, you would deliver this girl to us, yes? That is correct. It would be the same as if you stayed, or if any of the ones in your group stayed. Nelron offers an affable, friendly smile at uh, Garag. 
Very well then. Just really, if you volunteer, then I suppose that is as good as anyone. Looks the others who are very quiet. And says, uh, very well, very well then. Uh, can, can she be brought out here? We can exchange people. Garaka, sure, sure you can carry her if she can't walk herself. Of course. Uh, Chuk will uh, look over at uh, two of the nearby guards and uh, order for them to uh, bring uh, Hazel out. And uh, they will depart. There are, however, still many guards. Yeah. Uh, Chuk will look back towards uh, U5 and say, This will take a few minutes. The prison is some distance within the estate. Should we wait outside then? Sure. Well, you Listen, are we, outside we in to, the courtyard. Oh, oh, we would okay. want to do the trade here, like where, yeah. where they feel secure, that we're not just going to run away or something like that. Oh, of course. You, Basically, uh, if, if we take the courtesy to give them the edge when, when we are in these sort of trust situations... Uh, then I think it'll go much more smoothly than if we like pull it to the very edge of just being as untrustworthy as possible. Yeah, that's should usually we, not a good should sign. Should we make the second trade out here though, or should we make it at some other place? We can make it just here. It's fine. Um, now we go I to mean, strip some of our weapons and. Oh well, uh, Aurelia will probably strip stuff. I mean, when we make the second trade for the cauldron. Oh, uh, I mean. Sure, I don't. I don't see why we would sort of like at that point betraying us would just be kind of dumb. Because <laughs> then she no longer has the girl, and she would fight us and have the cauldron. I mean, she, but she would also have a radio and maybe a Greg. Uh, I don't really know why she would want you, but all right. No, but she definitely wants a for something. Well, I suppose a really wants her for something as well. Whatever that might be. It's very quick to, to volunteer herself. Do you remember these things that there's something going on there? But, <laughs> you know, she knew that goblin. I He doesn't... She hasn't told him anything. If there's something she wanted him to know, she probably would have told him. She killed that innocent. Yeah. Like, maybe, you know... I mean, sure. Sure, why not? Yes. That guy does like draconic things. Maybe she has an eye for him. Who knows? As, uh... It's maybe maybe another six or seven minutes of politely and peacefully loitering here with the soft burbling of the fountain and uh, walking out of the front manor of the household is a well, it's a quadruped a furless mass of muscle, scar tissue and barred piercings clad in haphazard barbing, barding, standing seven feet at the shoulder and nine to twelve feet long its incisors are the length of short swords. Upon this uh, quadruped's back appears to be an unconscious and rather bruised and bloodied uh, young woman. Maybe, uh, well, she is an elf, so it's fucking impossible to say how old she is. I mean, <laughs> she could be fucking 90,000 years old for all you fucking know. Her uh, garments are the colors of Christmas. Green and red. <laughs> uh, Chuk uh, looks over at the uh, the dog mole, a juggernaut who is being led by a guard, and uh, the dog mole, the rather terrifying and ominous creature, uh, although appears to be docile at least, and uh, being led, will uh, lead and... Uh, Move and stand not that far away from you. Maybe like three meters. Uh, Garak will sort of look to Juke to get Chuk, permission. Juke says, That is Hazel. You may pick her up. Is, um. There has been some problems in the city. We'd had to avoid some patrols to not be impeded. Do you have a, a side note, a symbol or some such that we perhaps could bring showing that we are uh, doing an errand for you as to not be accosted on our way? You might make this go faster. Chuk 
smiles and then says, I could fly you there. That is a sarcastic grin that appears on the dragon's face. Mm -hmm. oh. That might be a bit inconvenient. <laughs> the uh, dragon rumbles and says, Yes, yes, and then looks over at Nelron, who will uh, toss uh, what appears to effectively be like the mark of Chuk, like mm -hmm. a small little like uh, metal thing, signifying yeah, sure. that uh, <laughs> you're affiliated with this dragon. Mm -hmm. God, hope the Archmage doesn't find that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> Shadow War, right? Right? Uh-huh. Yes. And, and uh, after uh, tossing that over, uh, Nelrond will uh, politely smile and say, "There, that should be enough to scare away the kobolds who would think of trying to uh, enlist you." Very well then. Next to Aurelia, reaches a hand over to shake her hand. She will shake your hand. Hopefully, we can get this done tonight. Take care. 